Good morning, folks. Uh, thanks for coming. I think we, you know, we know it's very early, so we appreciate, you know, uh, coming over here. Uh, we've been told that we need to be less than six uh, feet apart, so we're going to be hugging uh, all the presentation like that. Um, so we, we do have an exciting uh, presentation for, for you today. We, we hope it's going to be good uh, use of your time. We're going to talk about uh, using the edge architectures with, with OpenStack. I'm Chris Janiszewski. I'm a senior principal solutions architect working with the uh, customer. I'm Darren Sorrentino. I'm principal uh, solutions architect on the same team as Chris, but uh, I'm also his secretary. So. <laughs> um, so we thought uh, along how to make best uh, use of your time, and uh, we thought like we should start with the, with the demo. Uh, also, some of the aspects of the presentation we're going to do here, it's, it's still work in progress, so, so please bear this uh, in mind. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, hopefully the demo gods are with us, uh, and we're going we're gonna to start with that. Um, yeah, a couple of the other demos we had were, uh, that you may have seen uh, um, that uh, were they're pre recorded. We're going to try to do a live one. We have a recording fallback, though. Yeah. So we're going to show you one of the kind of uh, sample uh, edge architecture we deployed in, in our labs. Uh, this is something we see a lot of our customers use, and we only have three sites in this example, but uh, from the customer perspective, we see hundreds of, of sites being deployed the same way. But it's pretty much rinse and repeat, so I think it's going to give you a good representation on how this is going to look. So in our case, we start with the central location, uh, where we run majority of the uh, control plane uh, control services. And we also have the set of hypervisors, so Nova Compute. Uh, we have a Ceph storage running in a central location. And we also have a, a pool of bare metal nodes that are going to be consumed by Ironic. Uh, the second side, the, so the first edge side, uh, we simulate, the, you know, it can be uh, up to 100 millisecond uh, latency round trip between them. So we simulate that. Uh, and the second side is. Uh, Compute, so we have uh, hypervisors, detached hypervisors. We also have a localized storage, so there's an individual Ceph cluster running at the second site. And we also have a poor pool of bare metal nodes, so ironic nodes, that can be consumed for, uh, for any type of OS or workload that needs to have this direct access to the bare metal. And then finally, for, for the use case where you don't have enough space to, to, to deploy another Ceph cluster, we created another edge location uh, with a single compute and just a local storage, right? So, so we're trying to cover as, as much ground as possible with, with this <laughs> tiny uh, environment, if you will. So I'm going to switch to the, to the OpenStack environment. And you can see we are using Red Hat OpenStack in this case, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, it, it should be transparent to, to other distributions as well. So I'm going to start with the, with the instances. And again, uh, if it's a little bit slow, please uh, forgive us as we're over Wi-Fi. And, and the lab is actually in North Carolina. Um, but in, in this case, we are running three virtual machines here. Uh, there's one virtual machine in central, one in the first edge location with the, with the uh, localized Ceph cluster, and we have an uh, edge two. And you can kind of distinguish them by looking at the, in the middle in the availability zone. You can see they're in the a, in a different availability zones. Uh, and we also, in, in our case, we are also deploying these bare metal instances, right? So there's, uh, we have a pool of bare metal instances at each of these locations, and in this case, we deployed some RHEL uh, OS straight on the bare metal, one in central and one in edge. So how this would look like from the user perspective, how, you know, how they would be able to uh, consume it. You know, obviously, we're doing things for the GUI, but the same uh, would apply for you know, API and CLI and, and whatnot. So I'm going to spawn another edge VM, if you will. And you will see that the user will have access to the multiple availability zones, right? So they can pick which, and if you have 100 availability zones, you know, they, they could all be visible here. In, in my case, I'm going to uh, deploy this next VM in a DCN1, which is my uh, bigger edge site. I'm going to uh, hit no for the, I'm going to use ephemeral storage in this case, although both uh, Cinder and, <laughs> and uh, ephemeral is supported. 
And then finally, I have a set of flavors that I can take advantage of. And this is only a Cirrus uh, VM that I'm going to deploy. So I'm going to pick a tiny, like a very tiny uh, VM. But you can see I also have a flavors special for like bare metal instances that I might want to deploy uh, on edge. Uh, moving to the last tab that I really care about is the networking. I can deploy the tenant networking that will be able to spawn uh, across all of my availability zones. In my case, I'm using what we call a routed provided networks. So these are the, the provided networks uh, that are kind of attached to a single neutron network and they're smart enough to select the right subnet based on which edge locations I'm, I'm deploying to. So this is definitely the layer three. Uh, they, they spawn over the layer three, but in my case, I kind of bundle them under the, the same uh, neutral network. So pretty simple. It looks just like having a flat architecture, uh, except you know we, we now have multiple availability zones and we can take advantage of it. I'm going to do this quickly for bare metal just to show you that it's exactly the same process. So instead of uh, availability zone uh, DCN or DCN1, I'm going to, I have this special availability zone called bare metal. And then in order to select, I'm going to pick rel here, but in order for me to select which side I want to deploy this bare metal uh, to, or you know, which side I want to pick the bare metal out of the pool, I have these special flavors attached to it. So I have one called bare metal edge, I pick it, and then rest I'm going to leave uh, the same and just hit launch and it should uh, you know, just, just do and, and deploy another one. So you can see the, the simplicity. It's, it's the same as running the OpenStack in a single site, right? There's, it's totally abstracted from the, from the users. Um, quickly show you what else is being kind of managed by this edge architecture. If I go to my uh, images and scroll down and pick one of those images that I'm using, you can see that not only I'm able to take advantage of the compute, but also my glance is propagated across these multiple edge sites, right? So every time I deploy this VM where my Ceph and glance is located at these edge locations, I don't have to pull that image and then go over my, uh, you know, maybe slow network. Uh, so, so this is one of the advantage of this architecture as well. So in the case where um, in the architecture where edge two had no storage, that image would come from the central location. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another, another thing is we talked about, it's not just ephemeral storage, and this is an example, I have volumes created uh, in each of the availability zones, one in central and, and one DCN. Um, quickly, a couple more things I wanna, I wanna show is if we go to admin and then system, system information, um, we, we showed you the, the volume, so there you, this is kind of a confirmation that we have a, individual Cinder volume services running in Central and DCN. And then if I go under the ironic bare metal provisioning, which is the section where you use the bare metal nodes, you can see that I have a pool of bare metal sitting, some of them in a central location, some of my edge, and this is the one I just, I just spawned, he's, he's, he's provisioning. Uh, another like really good advantage of OpenStack running the edge architecture uh, is, you know, OpenStack has very little overhead, right? So if you look at actually how big these compute nodes, and even my controllers, they're super tiny, right? So I could, in my lab, I designated 12 gigs of RAM per compute to run this, right? Uh, so that's one of the advantage we see customer or, you know, users that we work with picking OpenStack over something like, maybe something like more heavyweight Kubernetes, right? Uh, the, the, the overhead of OpenStack is, uh, uh, is way lower. Um, and then finally, one more thing I want to show you bef before I uh, turn it over to, to Darren. Uh, observability. It's just another very important uh, aspect. So in, in, in here, uh, we take advantage of uh, Prometheus for, for gathering uh, the data from all of the locations and then shipping it to the single pane of glass, if you will, right? So I can, I can switch between these different uh, sites and I can drill down into my resource utilizations for, uh, for the site. Uh, so that kind of concludes the, the demo. Uh, I hope uh, you like it. I'm gonna switch, uh, switch it back to the presentation and we're kind of gonna tell you a little bit more how the, how the sausage is made and how we make this all uh, happen.
Okay. Um, so what is the edge? Uh, so in edge can mean many different things uh, for a lot of different customers. Uh, edge kind of uh, can be used, a lot of people hear edge and they instantly think uh, telcos because telcos, uh, you talk about uh, your VDRANs and, um, and your remote access networks and stuff. Um, the goal with edge is to basically push your workloads out closer to your customers, um, closer to where, the, where the, it, it matters most. Um, but it spans many different industries. Um, anything from uh, manufacturing, transportation. Uh, we've, seen, uh, we've seen cruise ships where basically they wind up uh, putting uh, little clusters out on their cruise ships to do, uh, to do, works, uh, to do work there and stuff. Um, finance uh, it goes all the way out to handheld devices and stuff. Um, on the right side, most of the time when people think edge, they think geographic edge, pushing things out uh, across geography because uh, the the biggest gap there is the uh, latency to get um, to get uh, users on demand. I don't know if anyone has kids, but my kids, their patience is like zero. So uh, it seems like every generation that comes along, uh, any additional millisecond seems to bother them. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. So Edge is about pushing things out and making things faster for the for the uh, end customer delivery. <clears throat> So when you start talking about edge, there's a bunch of different considerations uh, because now you have distributed sites, which comes with uh, distributed challenges and problems. Um, you have multiple, uh, from the hardware perspective, now you have multiple points of presence uh, the, uh, around the globe, around the, around the country. Um, your workloads, uh, basically, you, you need to um, figure out what your risk assessments are at the edge now because if you're doing any kind of resiliency at the edge, uh, you need to uh, account for a number of servers uh, for failover situations and stuff. And also from the hardware perspective, you, you have to maintain those servers. So you have to get boots on the ground where those servers are. Um, from the networking side, uh, you get the uh, latency obviously issue um, there. It's, a, it's kind of a, uh, a balance between um, getting the stuff to run faster for your customer or getting it to come back to your, your central location uh, where you may, may want to uh, process that data, do data analytics and stuff like that. Um, there's, there's a ton of other routing. Uh, no one owns all of their cables from the edge all the way back to their central. Uh, in most cases, uh, telcos and uh, maybe one of the exceptions to that. Um, but you're, you're always trusting in someone else. So troubleshooting problems in the, those regards and outages, you need to ac account for um, types of things that are outside of your control, uh, which definitely can uh, take an impact on SLAs and uh, trying to make those types of calculations. Um, storage, so storage, uh, we, we talk, touched a little bit about that on the, the demo. Uh, you can have centralized storage or storage at the edge. Um, if you don't have storage at the edge and you're running a workload, your node goes down, you don't have any kind of resiliency, uh, that can be problematic, uh, but that may be, the, the type of workload may uh, be the, your risk uh, your risk versus cost may be worth it to do that. Um, the, uh, the footprints at the, at the edge uh, is also what can, can be taken into, it needs to be taken into account. Because if you are doing resilient storage, you're gonna need, um, you're gonna need at least something that provides uh, uh, three nodes or some, uh, if you're doing Ceph or some, something, something that's resilient so if you can, uh, you can afford that loss. Um, and the, uh, the last section here is where is your edge? So, uh, I mean, you can do, you, if, if you're a global enterprise, your edge is, you could say it's globally, but in realistically it's not. Uh, you're gonna break it down to regions um, due to latency and uh, redundancy, um, but your edge may not even be geographically related. Uh, it could actually be in your own data center, um, which we'll, uh, we will mention uh, a bit later. Um, and then the other advantage of doing edge versus uh, multiple deployments in other areas is the observability aspect. Uh, you can pull up a single pane of glass and be able to view DCN1, DCN2, and get good, uh, a good visibility into what, what, the, uh, what your utilization is. So uh, now we're gonna pass back to Chris to uh, talk about uh, various OpenStack uh, deployment topologies. Yeah, thanks, Darren. So we're gonna go over uh, kind of four <coughs> architectures that we see customers consider uh, for, the, for the edge deployment. And, um, it doesn't mean like what, like version one is better than version two. There are different use cases and then we just wanted to walk through the, f the four of them and, and kind of tell you uh, the differences, right? So starting with just a very traditional flat uh, deployment, right? So this is 
Uh, this is one of the things that majority of our customers are running. They're, they're not running any type of edge architectures, but maybe they're just running individual, individual clusters. Uh, and then instead of running one, they have a multiple smaller site across, either in the same data center or across multiple geographical locations, right? So this is kind of our starting point. And there's, there's pros and cons of going this way, right? Like it's a, it's a proven architecture. We've seen hundreds of customers uh, deploying it. Uh, so you, you get that peace of mind. You're not trying to get into uh, something that, that has not been maybe fully tested or, or uh, adopted by, by the larger community of, of the OpenStack users, right? Uh, the disadvantage is, you know, these are totally disconnected environments, right? So you need to put, you need to take care of yourself of some, putting something that will connect them and, and give you the observability across. Uh, and this could be accomplished with something like Prometheus and Grafana, but uh, from like the API perspective, you know, you, you kind of have to take care of this yourself with, I don't know, maybe something like Terraform or Ansible to be able to interact with all of these clouds uh, individually. And then the version one, if you will, it's the, what we sort of presented in this, uh, in this demo a little bit earlier, where you have a centralized control plane in one of the locations. Whether this control, control plane has additional compute, it's, it's entirely up to you. We see customers dedicating one side just for the control, and they're making it as resilient as possible. Um, with that said, this one control plane is your single point of failure. So if you, if you, if you uh, lose that side, you're no, your users will no longer have access to the APIs. Your workloads in the other sites, they're gonna stay active, they're gonna work fine, especially because in this architecture, we're also running individual Ceph cluster at each of the locations. Uh, but that control plane is still, you know, it's, it's still pretty critical, right? Um, some of the requirements here, uh, we mentioned in the, in the lab, uh, from the Red Hat perspective as a, as a company, we support 100 milliseconds. Uh, between these sites, latency, round trip. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we have tried to push this even beyond 100 milliseconds with some really positive uh, results. So if your use case uh, needs like bigger uh, dis disruption from the OpenStack perspective, that might be as well possible. And then going to the version three, or version two, I guess, uh, if we start with zero. <laughs> um, so this is almost the same as the, as the one before, but imagine deploying the edge architecture in a single data center where your latencies between the sites are less or like single digit or low double digit. If you can consider that, you know, so you take the edge architecture and deploying that to gain other benefits in running your workload. And if you're doing it, now you, this opens up to other possibilities. You can, you can now stretch your control plane across multiple edge locations, if you will, right? And again, those edge locations, they are limited from the latency perspective, but they do buy you much better resiliency. In this architecture, you can kill any of your, you know, any of your sites and your entire cluster stays operational, right? So we see this uh, architecture getting implemented by customers who do look for, you know, improve their SLAs, et cetera. And then finally, uh, in the previous, this is kind of improvement on the, on the previous version. Now, instead of stretching the controllers over the same, let's say, layer two network, now let's introduce BGP to the mix, right? Uh, now let's break the, the virtual IPs that are managed by your controllers uh, in like a BGP agent running at each of the locations that can manage the, the failover of the, of the VIPs if one of those locations goes down. So OpenStack um, is a, a number of different services. So when you're considering an edge deployment, um, you need to kind of consider the different services that exist within uh, OpenStack. So in a, in a typical uh, DCN deployment that we would typically do, um, your services are distributed uh, uh, as seen here on the screen. Um, in this, in actually this, if we compare this to the, the demo we did, uh, edge one and two are, are swapped. So um, an edge two, in, uh, in the demo we had um, the storage and everything uh, within uh, the one DCN. Um, so, and you need to also consider the, 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 the 
the traffic that goes between those. So you, so you have your edge workload traffic, um, but then you have to also consider your traffic uh, between on the internal API between the different services. Um, and most of those uh, timeouts can be adjusted. Um, so as Chris mentioned, we support the 100 millisecond latency out of the box. Um, and there can be some tweaks done as far as configuration uh, for the other services to, to ensure that uh, you, you're, you meet whatever uh, SLAs uh, you have and you don't have a, any kind of failures. So, so one more note to add here. Oh, so, yeah. so there's a certain amount of flexibility uh, here as well. Like we're, we're giving you the example of what we see a majority of the customers are doing. You know, so like three different type of edges where we push different services to different sites. But we can, like in a demo, for instance, we've been running Ironic, and those Ironic services have been running in both central location as well as the Edge One, uh, in our case. And, and you can think there's some creative ways of like uh, pushing your 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 you know your working services closer to your to your end users based on your requirements. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Um, so OpenStack uh, versus Kubernetes for the Edge. We get this uh, question a lot. Um, and uh, it's really, and there's no, there's no answer for, there's no single answer that solves everything. Uh, it's really dependent upon the types of workloads you're running at the edge. Um, this just gives a, a rough example of stuff that um, we would typically uh, lean towards maybe OpenStack for uh, localized services like print servers or uh, any kind of resource intense uh, workloads. Um, or or multi-tenancy, uh, you have specific requirements for uh, uh, traffic segmentation and, and stuff. Um, when you're talking about workloads like running web servers or database servers or um, specific types of application servers at the edge, uh, perhaps Kubernetes uh, on bare metal at the edge is, is a better option for you. Um, we, 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 talk to the, we talk to customers a lot about um, which one works for them. Um, and then there's also the possibility that doing a DCN deployment with Kubernetes on top of the DCN deployment uh, may be the best option. Um, but the uh, one thing that a lot of customers um, don't uh, necessarily look at until uh, later is uh, outside considerations, like their vendor support. Um, if you have, like, if you're working with telcos and they have, um, and you're working with vendors that have uh, VNFs, you're running VNFs at the edge, they may not have CNFs to run uh, in your containerized uh, deployment at the edge. Uh, and then perhaps your application architecture has certain demands um, in regards to the way it's deployed, where uh, OpenStack may be a better option than Kubernetes at the edge. Um, so um, one of the ones I mentioned was uh, uh, Kubernetes and utilizing both OpenStack and Kubernetes. You get, um, this, does, this has a, 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 an advantage of the fact that you get uh, the scalability and flexibility at your infrastructure layer as well as your uh, platform uh, layer. Um, this is uh, similar, no, no different really than deploying, um, uh, at, deploying Kubernetes on VMs out in the, the public cloud where um, that you get that scalability and, and resiliency. Um, and then uh, within the deployment itself, uh, for instance, uh, on this edge here, um, which I'm showing delineated by the dotted lines, two different uh, Two different OpenShift cluster deployments, so you can keep you can you can uh, deploy multi-tenancy at the OpenStack layer, um, and then deploy uh, multiple OpenShift uh, clusters at the uh, within the tenants of uh, OpenStack to give you that multi-tenancy segmentation that you may need in OpenShift, but you can't get necessarily from from the networking topology. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, and so the, so the OpenStack kind of advantage of merging these two worlds together, those two you know open source. Uh, architectures together, they both have the strengths and weaknesses, right? So, so OpenStack not only provides you that multi-tenancy, but allows you to mix, for example, a bare metal workers with the virtualized uh, masters, right? So, which Kubernetes by itself cannot do it. It has, you know, like it, it cannot virtualize on itself, at least right now. But um, yeah, the, you know, getting these two together has has more benefits than running them uh, separate. Absolutely. Um, so just to go back to where we started, what is edge? Um, by show of hands, who thinks edge is geographic topology? Good, uh, <laughs> because it is definitely an architecture. Um, and this, this is one of the things that was listed in tech preview. Um, this, uh, the BGP um, that we're working on uh, replaces the, the VRP requirements on the layer two. Um, so what we had was a customer that deployed, uh, wanted OpenStack, and they, within their single data center, they had three separate network fabrics. 
Um, they wanted to uh, be able to deploy their controllers in, this, in the same data center and, and have resiliency in case of a single fabric failure. So, uh, so we're putting a lot of uh, engineering into um, replacing VRP with a, with a BGP agent um, that removes that layer two uh, requirement from the control plane layer. Um, we still have, uh, so with uh, 17.1, it's tech preview or GA? I think it's GA in it, 17.1. Uh, it's not released yet, but it's supposed to be GA. Um, but um, uh, so, uh, but we do still have, there are still um, some caveats with it. Um, there is still a 10 millisecond uh, latency requirement between the controllers, um, but that's easily achievable within a single data center. Um, and I think a, a lot of the, a lot of the um, requirements around uh, that deployment uh, topology is around what we have tested or have not tested before we actually release. So, so those requirements may, may change between now and then. Um, anything you want to add to that, Chris? No, I, th I think that's it, yeah. So, so I think that the bottom line is, you know, the, the edge architecture can be distributed geographically. There's no, there's no single architecture to solve them all. If you, need, uh, if you need to push them out and have like, you know, uh, some connection, like if you want to accept the connection issues between these different sites, there are architectures for that, but you can use this, you know, you can kind of twist this architecture a little bit and deploy it in a single data center and get additional benefits of, of having uh, your control plane and, and compute distributed across. All right, um, thank you. I think, uh, do we have, yeah, we have, we have like uh, two more minutes for, the, for Question. the questions if there's any, but otherwise, uh, thanks so much for, the, for being here. Um, we, after this, if, if no one wants to come up to the microphone and ask questions in front of everybody else, uh, we are going to be at the booth uh, after this uh, uh, session if you guys wanted to come out and talk to us. Can you, uh, can you walk to the microphone if you don't mind? Thanks so much. I actually joined late, but if I, if I interpret correctly what you're suggesting that if you have to deploy edge use cases, uh, so is probably recommended or is it beneficial to deploy on OpenStack or bare metal Kubernetes? Are you Kubernetes so on Kubernetes on OpenStack or bare metal Kubernetes? Yeah, so that so that was um that was what there's no there's no there's no one or the other there's there's no answer for that without knowing what the workloads are, um, what what your goal is, what your business goal business uh, processes are and stuff. Um, it's not it's it's not an easy solution to say just do bare metal uh, Kubernetes versus doing OpenStack with uh, Kubernetes on top of it. Well, uh, I think that was that the question or no? If it, so, so I think you're asking for the differences between deploying Kubernetes straight on the bare metal versus bare metal with OpenStack, right? Yeah. So yeah. there's, as, as uh, Darren mentioned, there's pros and cons. I actually had a meeting with a customer yesterday and they selected the route of deploying uh, Kubernetes with the OpenStack Ironic. And the reason they selected that is they wanted to have their cloud infrastructure uh, kind of independent of the Kubernetes distribution. So they not only want to deploy the Kubernetes at the edge, right, but they have other workloads uh, that would be handled by, by OpenStack Ironic. But maybe the, the metal cube that is being bundled with the Kubernetes, it's really focused just on the Kubernetes and, and that's it, right? So, so, so again, for, for them, uh, they want to have agnostic bare metal platform that can deploy anything at the edge, being Kubernetes or maybe being a vendor agnostic for that Kubernetes. They maybe want to have Kubernetes from Red Hat and maybe from Google and someone else, right? If you use Ironic for this use case, then you have that ability. If you stick to the vendor, that vendor will typically give you a solution to only deploy Kubernetes of their flavor, if that makes sense. So that's one of the reasons, but there might be other use cases for that as well. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Uh, do you want to? Do you mind coming to the microphone? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. So for the demo you showed, you have a central location and two edge. Correct. So between the central and edge, are they routed or they are layer two uh, network requirements? For example, OpenStack you have a private network, right? Is this, this network being layer two stressed between central and edge or they're routed? 
So in the, in the demo here, uh, no, because our, our entire uh, entire control stack is in central. Yeah. So it's just the layer three connectivity between uh, the edge and the, and the okay. central for the, for that we did in the demo. Okay, basically the data centers, they do not have a layer two DCI requirement, right? They're just purely layer three routing is okay. Correct, yeah, because okay. the central is all deployed in this. If we, if we, if we wanted to, Deploy the control plane across the different data centers without, uh, in the current uh, current deployment, because of the VRP requirements, we would require a layer two connectivity between them. But since we're centralizing all of the control functions in a single data center, um, there's no uh, layer two requirements between the two data centers. Okay. Yeah. Between the two edges, uh, the the different nodes they can have been different subnets. Right. There are no kind of requirements for them to be in the same layer two. No, they don't have okay. to be in the same. And in our demo, they were actually not in the same subnet. Uh, I wanted to keep them relatively close uh, just to take advantage of what we call the routed provider network. So it's this concept of the provider network that's smart enough to pick the right edge with the right network. But if you just want to have totally independent uh, layer two networks in each of these sites, that's perfectly fine as well. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. In the demo, when he showed the networking, it showed the different subs within the same network. Each one is a separate subnet, so yeah. it's a separate, um, separate uh, L2. Layer, layer three network. Okay. All right, I think we're uh, one minute over. Uh, thank you so much. We're gonna be at the, at the booth. Uh, please see us if, if you have any more questions, but otherwise, thanks so much for coming. Yeah, thank you.